What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So here we're going to take a look at the um, new patch notes that got released yesterday. And honestly, I've already looked through this and there's a lot of nerfs to a lot. The builds and the aspects. But there are some um, some good positive changes, some additional things put into the game that I think are pretty cool. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Starting off at the very start here is some of the new uniques that they've added into the game. So the first one is the Havarian Spear of Lycander. It's an uber unique staff, which means it's going to be equally hard to get as all the other uber uniques. And it will only drop in World Tier 4. I believe this is an adaptation of Lycander's Flank from Diablo 2. What it does is gain a random shrine effect for 10 to 20 seconds after killing an elite and can only occur every 30 seconds. Um, this actually I think is a very cool item. Um, shrine effects can be very overpowered. It can definitely help make a build strong. Um, I don't know if it'll be overly used, but I think it'll definitely make for a very fun unique. It remains to really be seen. Um, that's it for the Uber Uniques, I guess. Uh, the next one is a regular Unique, and it's the Azeroth, another item from Diablo 2. And it says, lucky hit, your core skills have a 20% chance to freeze enemies for 3 seconds, and deal 0 0.75 to 1.5 times cold damage to them. Not bad. Overall, I think it'll see some use, especially for Barbarians, or actually, sorry, not for Barbarians. Or, yeah, for Barbarians, because it's purely for the Barbarian. <clears throat> Next up for Druid, we have the Flesh Render. Unique one-hand mace, debilitating roar. And Blood Howl deals 0.5 to 1.0 damage to nearby poisoned enemies. Okay. Flesh Render was also a unique item from Diablo 2. Necromancer got the Lidless Wall Adaptation. Lucky hit, while you have an active boiling storm, there is hitting an enemy outside of the bone storm has up to 25, 5 to 25% chance to spawn an additional bone storm at their location. Each of your active sacrifice bonuses increase your chance by 25% and the total number of additional bone storms you can have by plus one. I think that's actually a pretty good unique. Bone storm is pretty powerful for necromancers. I think that'll see a lot of use. For Rogue, they got the Eagle Horn. Penetrating Shot has a 30 to 80% chance to fire an arrow that bounces off walls and scenery. Hitting enemies from behind with Penetrating Shot will make them vulnerable for 3 seconds. I think that's actually a very good unique. Um, it'll suck at 30% for sure. It'll be very good at 80%. Sorcerer got the adaptation of the Oculus, which in this case is a unique wand. Gain the effect of the teleport enhancement for free. When you evade using teleport enhancement, you are taken to a random location. This is, I guess, pretty much they tried to make it like the Oculus in D2. That being said, this was the worst part of the Oculus. It was just being randomly teleported when you got hit. I can see this actually going even worse in Diablo 4, because if you land in the middle of a bunch of mobs, you're just going to get popped. We'll see if that actually gets any use. Next up, we have the new 7 Legendary Aspects. So in terms of general, for Audacity, Utility Aspect, there's at least 5 close enemies. Stun them for 2-4 to four seconds. This can only occur every 20 seconds. It's not bad. I don't see it being overly used. Craven Mobility Aspect, you gain 20-40% to 40 increased speed when moving away from slowed or chilled enemies again i don't see this getting too much use ancestral charge offensive aspect charge calls forth four ancients who also charge dealing 50 to 100 percent normal damage that's actually not too bad for druid subterranean poison creepers active also cast landslide in a circle around you earth skills deal 10 percent increased damage to poison enemies that I can definitely see being used a little bit. Necromancer, 
Gorquil's offensive aspect. Blood Lance will consume Blood Orbs to also conjure lances from them. Each additional Blood Lance deals 20 to 50% of normal damage and prioritizes targeting unlanced enemies. Also pretty cool. Might see some use, especially for Blood Lance Necros. Rogue, Pestilent Points, offensive aspects. Every third cast of Puncture is poison imbued with 100 to 150% of normal potency. I don't know if this will be very good. To be, be perfectly honest. Sorcerer, Searing Wards, offensive aspects. After spending 200 to 100 mana, your next firewall is free to cast and will destroy incoming small missiles. Seeing as Firewall Sorcerer was one of the good builds, at least early on upon release, I don't know how viable it still is, but it may see some more light of day with this um, offensive aspect, hopefully. Next up, they have a bunch of bug fixes for like challenges, co-op play, for dungeons. I don't want to go over every single one because there, there's a lot. But I will post this website in the um, video description if you guys do want to take a look at all the bug fixes. There's honestly a lot. It's kind of hard to believe that the game had this many bugs, but as you can see, lots and lots of bugs. <laughs> Next up for the gameplay updates, some of this we already knew, so the Altar of Lilith unlocks are now account-wide, map discoveries account-wide. Whispers no longer reward your sigil dust, so that makes them a bit worse. Overall loot quality has been significantly improved for silent chests, this still remains to be seen how good that really is. The channel time from the leave dungeon ability has been increased to 3 to 5 seconds. That's useless and a bad change i don't know why they would put that in we have generally reduced the tendency for many monsters to move around in combat so that the melee characters don't have to chase down their enemies as much that's a good sense and a dual edge sense wireless controller support for pc so now if you're a pc gamer you can also play with the controller I guess. I don't know. I'm personally not a controller player. I use mouse and keyboard. Renown value adjustments. Side quest renown values increased from 20 to 30. Okay. Dungeon renown values increased from 30 to 40. Okay. So it's a little bit easier to get renown now. But as far as I know, this was supposed to be carried over. So if you didn't already do it on your one character and doesn't transfer, then I guess it's a bit easier to do it again. World Tier 2, falling bonus is added, so they increase the gold drop and more items from World Tier 2. Level scaling inside dungeons and most overworld territories has been adjusted for World Tiers 3 and 4. Monsters will begin to trail behind the player in a level after a certain point, up to maximum of 5 levels behind. This change does not affect world bosses, legion events, fields of hatred, health, hide, or nightmare dungeons. So World Tier 3, if the player's level is below 55, monster level is below 55. I don't know why they didn't combine these two in one, because it means the same thing. So if you're below 60, monster's level is 55. Um, if the player's 61, monster level is 56, so then it starts moving up with you. And then they keep explaining that up to a maximum of level 70 for World Tier 3. And then for World Tier 4, again, these could have been combined into one. If the player's level is below level 80, the monster, or 80 or lower, the monster is level 75, and then it moves up, respectively, by one with you. And from this point, uh, they'll be minus five, up until, I guess, 100. In terms of experience, reward experience for completing Whispers in World Tiers 3 and 4 has been significantly increased. We are adjusting bonus experience rewards for killing monsters that are higher level than the player. So for preseason, it used to be 15, 20, 25. After, it's now 1.5% for up to 10 levels. Which makes it significantly worse, because now if you're doing a Nightmare Dungeon that's for 10 levels higher than you, 
You'd be getting the same as it used to be for one level higher than you. The experience rates in this game are so astronomically shit for how much you need to get those Paragon points that them lowering it is definitely a change for the worse, not the better. They're also adjusting experience rewards for monster level. Offsets for higher world tiers. So world tier 3 plus 3 world tier, sorry world tier 2 plus 3 world tier 3 plus 10 and world tier 100 is what it used to be and now it goes from 3 to 6 to 10. So again, significant experience nerf the game. If you're level one, you bring your monster and you have the monster. You get level 100 monster X3. After seasonal, you get level. This is. These are such shit changes. Like every Diablo game or an iteration of the game has had power leveling into the game. It's always been a core part of Diablo. It's always meant to get you alternate characters, level up quickly so you can, like, Play different builds, enjoy different things. Them nerfing it into the ground like this, from what it seems, is a very bad change for the game. I don't know why they keep pushing in this direction, but until they change it, this is a very downhill slope for the game. For Helltides, monsters are now levels 3 higher instead of 2. Torture Gift to Mystery has been increased from 250 to 175. This is the other thing that annoys me with the way that they make these changes. Is like every time something is like good or worth farming in the game, they seem to nerf it somehow. Make it more difficult for players to farm that. Which again, has always been a very core part of like the Diablo experience. Like you find a spot you like, you find it being more efficient than others. You farm it over and over, and that's always been a core mechanic of the Diablo series. So I don't understand why they keep trying to nerf these into, uh, into the ground. All interactable objects and health items that have a small chance of dropping at burn cinders. Positive change, I guess, for getting more. So next up, we have... <laughs> I want to say general changes, but it's more or less the general nerfs. So for Aspect of Disobedience, maximum stacks now are 60 instead of 100, and the maximum bonus got reduced from 25 to 50 to 15 to 30. This is like... Almost a more than 50% nerf to, to the defense game by this. Which is funny, because in super high like nightmare dungeons i'm talking like 80 90 plus like even having a hundred stacks at 50 percent or like most people put on the amulet 75 percent you were still taking a significant amount of damage so now it just made this like almost useless anyways moving on aspect of retribution bonus damage to stun enemies reduced from 20 to 40 to 10 to 20 another big nerf Although, eh. Splitter's aspect bonus damage to unstoppable, reduced from 20 to 50 to 20 to 40. Not as big a nerf, but still a nerf. And Starlight aspect resource restore increased from 10 to 20 to 20 to 40. Okay, that's a positive change, I guess. For items, the Butcher's Cleaver slow has been increased from 40 to 75% to 61 to 75%. Um, I don't know how much this item was really used, but it did get a little bit of a buff on the minimum end. And drop rate adjustments. So increased bonus to drop ancestral and sacred items in nightmare dungeons from 5 to 10%. Okay. Remove 20% chance to drop an extra equipment from elite monsters outside of nightmare dungeons and helltide. Again, useless. I don't know why they did this change in the negative direction not the positive 
increased chance to drop an extra equipment from an elite monster in Nightmare Dungeons and Helltide by 10%. That's good. Nightmare Dungeons now have a 50% chance to drop a secondary, second legendary item upon completion. Also good. And Nightmare Dungeons now give three rare items upon completion up from one. So the, these last three are actually positive changes. I like that. This is a very negative change. Um, for monsters, increased monster HP scaling from 85% to 100% bonus per extra player in the party. Uh, this effectively, I mean, I guess it's still faster to farm in a party because even though like it's 100% and yes, the monsters are going to be tankier, split farming with four people will always be faster to clear than by yourself. But again, I feel like this wasn't a change that was needed. Under miscellaneous, so adjusted the scaling of Greed Shrine to improve its effectiveness throughout the game. That's good because Greed Shrine was useless. World bosses now drop potions more often. I guess this is fine for like lower world tiers, but as far as world tier 4 is concerned, the world boss goes down in a matter of like seconds. There is no longer a limit to how many materials you can refine into the higher materials at once. That's also a good change. We're increasing the viability of the affixes below to make them easier to include in different builds. So, control impaired duration reduction can now appear on pants. Barrier generation is now available for all classes, and it will begin dropping later in the game. I guess you can't get it as early. Like a hit chance while you have a barrier can now appear for all cl classes, reduced by 12% when on helmet, and 20% when on amulets or offhand this is a weird change i don't know why they keep trying to nerf stuff that's on amulet when the whole point of it being on amulet is that it's 1.5 times stronger mastery skill damage newly added can appear on sorcerer's weapon scales identically to core skill damage Resistant to all element, elements can now appear on shields. And then strength, 50% stronger when on weapons. 25% stronger when on weapons. So they nerfed every single stat that can appear on weapons individually by 50%. Terrible, terrible change to the game. Especially when everybody needed to really stack their main stat in order to get, like, you know, the most output damage. So now that just makes rolling main stat on your weapons a bit more useless. So, cooldown. This is their note. Is the cooldown reduction affixes often felt mandatory due to their raw power. We imagine cooldown reduction will remain a highly desirable stat, but the penalty for not prioritizing it won't be as harsh. This, I think, can be a good change. So, cooldown reduction reduced by 30%. Imbuement skill cooldown reduction reduced by 30%. Trap skill cooldown reduction reduced by 30%. These are actually decently positive changes. But, then we have this. Critical strike damage reduced by 17%. So, now there's less critical strike damage. Lightning critical strike damage reduced by 17%. And critical strike damage with bone, earth, imbued, and werewolf skills reduced by 17%. And a massive nerf to vulnerable damage reduced by 40%. Very, very bad changes. <laughs> that being said, I personally hate the critical strike damage modifier as a Diablo 2 player. I was never part of the game. I know it was a big part in Diablo 3 but it felt like it made more sense in Diablo 3. Doesn't feel like it makes as much sense in Diablo 4. Mainly just because it seems like it's a lot harder to get critical strike rate in certain aspects. Not overly, but the fact that you need to, like, if you're, if you're playing any kind of critical strike, you absolutely need every single critical strike modifier to make your build viable. Makes it a little bit annoying. Anyway, moving on. 
So critical strike damage inherent on swords. So now that's been reduced to half. And vulnerable damage that's inherent on crossbows has also been reduced by two-thirds. 65% is a massive nerf. That combined with the vulnerable damage in general reduced by 40% is a massive nerf to, to that. I guess they're trying to push builds that so not every single build you will use vulnerable damage or critical strike damage, but I don't know if like nerfing it this significantly was a good idea. Damage to crowd controlled enemies decreased by 30%. Damage to frozen enemies increased by 20%. So now you fully have to freeze enemies to actually do like significant amounts of damage. And then they buffed a bunch of the other damages as well. So physical damage increased by 25%, and that goes the same for fire, cold, lightning, poison, and shadow, and non-physical. Then physical damage over time increased by 40%, same with fire, shadow. And they pretty much increased from what it looks like is every single type of um, damage that isn't critical or vulnerable. So I guess that's their way of making it so that you don't necessarily have to focus on those as much. Um, they also, let's see what else here. So they also have attack speed after dodging an attack increased by 20%. Damage for 4 seconds after dodging an attack increased by 20%. They reduced the armor of Werebear by 25%. Armor and Werewolf reduced by 25%. Damage reduction from close enemies, 20%. From distant, 20%. From bleeding, 25%. Burning, 25%. Poison, 25%. And damage reduction from enemies in Shadow over time reduced by 25%. And damage reduction, while well, 4 to 5, reduced by 25%. So they pretty much nerfed tankiness into the ground despite trying to push tankiness into the patch. I'm not sure exactly what they were really trying to do there, but... Yeah, that pretty much uh, covers it for this patch, guys. That's going to be it for this video, guys. I don't know how these changes will fully impact with Season 1. There's been a lot of nerfs that might make a lot of builds and classes kind of unplayable in certain ways, especially with the big nerfs to vulnerable damage and critical strike damage, which does seem to be a fundamental part of Diablo 4's game as they're in their individual damage buckets when it comes to damage calculations. That being said, there are a bunch of new items, aspects, and some other like buffs to damage in other ways, so this might also open up possibilities for more builds being a little bit more viable in the game. Hopefully this has been playtested enough to the point where it will be like this. That remains to be seen as we play through Season 1. As always, guys, my social media information is in the video description below. Be sure to like and subscribe as it does help promote the channel further if you found this content helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.